In 2021, the physicist Stephen Koonin, who served as Undersecretary for Science in the Obama Administration Energy Department, published the best-selling Unsettled, What Climate Science Tells Us, What It Doesn't, and Why It Matters. The book attracted extremely negative reviews, filled with ad hominem attacks, such as a short statement appearing in Scientific American, signed by 12 academics, that instead of dealing with the substance of the book, calls the author a crank who's only taken seriously by far-right disinformation peddlers, hungry for anything they can use to score political points, and just another denier trying to sell a book. I couldn't find a single negative review of Unsettled that disputed its claims directly or even described them accurately. Many of the reviewers seemed to have stopped reading after the first few pages. Others were forced to concede that many of Kunin's facts were correct, but objected that they were used in the service of challenging official dogma. True statements were downplayed as trivial or as things everyone knows, despite the extensive parts of Unsettled that documented precisely the opposite. When dissenting scientists are implicitly compared to Holocaust deniers, or their ideas considered to be too dangerous to be carefully considered, it undermines public respect for the field and can lead to catastrophic policy mistakes. It's human nature to favor evidence that confirms our biases and leads to simple conclusions. But for science to advance, it's essential that moral certainty not override objective discussion and that personal attacks not replace rational consideration of empirical evidence. In a review of Unsettled in Scientific American, Gary Yohe, an emeritus professor at Wesleyan University, gives the impression that he didn't read past the first few pages. The book has nine chapters filled with examples of exaggerations and outright falsehoods in both scientific and popular accounts. Yohe mentions just four claims taken from the first two pages, plus one from a chapter subtitle, and manages to refute none of them. He seizes on the assertion, which appears on page two, that the warmest temperatures in the U.S. have not risen in the past 50 years. According to what measures, Yohe writes, highest global averages? Absolutely not. If he had bothered to keep reading, Yohe would have found a detailed account of precisely what measure Conan was using and the evidence that record high temperatures in the U.S. are no more common than they were in the 1970s. Yohe attacks Kunin's assertion that heat waves in the U.S. are now no more common than they were in 1900, claiming that this is a questionable statement depending on the definition of heat wave, and so it is really uninformative. Heat waves are poor indicators of heat stress. If Yohe had read carefully, he would have found the official heat wave index used and why it matters. He offers no evidence that heat stress, something even less well-defined and hence less informative than heat wave, is greater than in 1900. Yohe also focuses on the first word of the book's title, unsettled. He claims that Kunin deploys that highly misleading label to falsely suggest that we don't understand the risks well enough to take action. Actually, Kunin's argument is that claims of harm from human climate impacts have been exaggerated and are misrepresented in the press, and that we should undertake more sensible and longer-term policies than many activists and politicians currently advocate. In another article, published on the website of the Union of Concerned Scientists, Yohe writes that although Kunin is a very skilled and well-respected physicist, he should follow the approach of those on the front lines, people who know what they are doing because they have been doing this for 15 years. Kunin has been attacked by others for not being a climate scientist by trade. In most dogmatic religions, only the anointed are granted the authority to speak. But science is supposed to be a discipline that's open to anyone who can interpret the relevant material. Unsettled is a book you can accurately judge by its cover, wrote Mark Boslow, a fellow of the Committee for Skeptical Inquiry in Yale Climate Review Connections. And it seems as if he barely read further. He denies that anyone in the media, politics, or otherwise of prominence has claimed that climate science is settled. He ignores all of the book's substantive points because the cover was the only part worth reading. Kunin is accused of having cherry-picked and carelessly misrepresented many of his sources by Bob Ward, the Policy and Communications Director at the London School of Economics, Grantham Research Institute on Climate Change. Though his refutations are weak, at least Ward does seem to have read the book. In one chapter, Kunin takes the media to task for its overheated account of the link between human CO2 emissions and hurricane frequency, such as a USA Today article headlined, Global Warming is Making Hurricanes Stronger, Study Says. The article states unequivocally that human-caused global warming has strengthened the wind speeds of hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones around the globe. Kunin points out that the study on which that article is based doesn't make that claim with such certainty. 
Gunin quotes directly from the study, but Ward accuses him of having omitted another excerpt from the same paper, which reads, From a storyline balance of evidence or type 2 error avoidance perspective, the consistency of the trends identified here with expectations based on physical understanding and greenhouse warming simulations increases confidence that TCs have become substantially stronger and that there is a likely human fingerprint on this increase. Ward must be confused about what that sentence means because it doesn't support the USA Today article or undermine Kunin's point. That passage is saying that although there is only suggestive evidence that tropical cyclones have gotten stronger, we're better off assuming that they are and that humans are partly responsible. Kunin likely agrees with that statement, and he's certainly correct that it doesn't justify unambiguous headlines like, global warming is making hurricanes stronger, study says. After Kunin wrote a Wall Street Journal op-ed entitled, Greenland's Melting Ice is No Cause for Climate Change Panic, in February 2022, an organization called Climate Feedback, which calls itself a worldwide network of scientists sorting fact from fiction and climate change media coverage, published a response. It labeled Kunin's article, cherry-picking, flawed reasoning, lack of context, misleading. The point of Kunin's op-ed was straightforward and illustrated by this graph. While Greenland is losing ice, the main driver cannot be anthropogenic climate change because there is no steady increase in line with either human CO2 emissions or atmospheric concentrations of CO2. Carbon dioxide emissions and warming may be important, but other factors were clearly more important in the past. Kunin also acknowledged that the United Nations Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change projects that for the most likely course of greenhouse gas emissions in the 21st century, the average annual ice loss would be somewhat larger than the peak value shown in the graph. How is it cherry picking to show all the data? Columbia University's Marco Tedesco claims that the article picks only the last 10 years, excluding the remaining time series for the context. And yet the graph published in the op-ed clearly shows the data since 1900 and addresses all of it. Ironically, the Climate Feedback Review is guilty of cherry picking. It claims to rebut Kunin by stating that a 2015 article in Nature found that the ice loss between 2003 and 2010 not only more than doubled relative to the 1983 to 2003 period, but also relative to the net mass loss rate throughout the 20th century. In other words, climate feedback picked the fastest eight-year increase over the 121-year span shown on the chart and compared it to the lowest 21 years. That's the definition of cherry picking. It's also irrelevant for the climate change debate because both periods occurred in the time period of rapid global warming, generally taken to have begun in 1970 or shortly before. Eric Rignot of the University of California, Irvine, who contributed to Climate Feedback's attempt to rebut Kunin, dismisses the op-ed by claiming that it's rehashing the old argument that the 1930s were warmer than the present, which is false. When in fact, that's not the argument and has nothing to do with Kunin's point. In another climate feedback article, this one a review of a video that Kunin made to summarize his book, Southern Illinois University's Justin Schuf disputes Kunin's claim that the U.S. heat waves are no more common today than in 1900. The 2018 U.S. climate assessment shows that heat wave season in the United States has increased in length since the 1960s, he writes. This is doubly irrelevant, since it refers to a different metric and a different time period than Kunin referred to. To make matters worse, Schuf is citing precisely the data that Kunin explains are misleading in his book. Why does it matter that Kunin's critics don't want to bother responding to his arguments? Substantive debate is how science advances. If climate science is just an echo chamber, we may make perverse short-term overreactions to the data that have large costs and possibly even negative environmental consequences. Many historical policy disasters have been caused by people claiming they shouldn't have to engage with informed critics. Unsettled is about more than just climate policy. It seeks to free science from the shackles of organized dogma, the sole domain of an anointed elite who feel justified in calling their critics cranks, deniers, and disinformation peddlers. Why engage with a heretic when he can be banished from the church altogether?